Hello YouTube and welcome in the new episode of the hypertrophy series where we discuss the relationship between stimulus and fatigue. This is something that is discussed quite often on YouTube Fitness and I must say right now that I personally believe it is not a good discussion for the most part simply because the terms used are too vague. Stimulus can mean many things. Stimulus can take many forms. It can have many results. And the issue is that when you compare it with something as vague as fatigue, you don't have the ability to actually come up with any sensible discussion, argument, or realization because the terms and the premises that you propose are just that. They're not, they're not defined enough to be able to actually create something that is going to resemble any semblance of an interesting discussion for hypertrophy. Fatigue, the way I perceive it, can be muscular fatigue, it can be cardiovascular fatigue, it can be mechanical fatigue, it can be tendon fatigue, it can be CNS fatigue, all of which also have their own little intrinsic word. So you cannot just throw the word fatigue out there and hope to be able to pinpoint something that would create a valuable relationship between the two. The reason why, why people discuss it so much is that there is this idea that you can accumulate fatigue that is not going to result in stimulus. And that is very true. If you train a certain way, for example, we've discussed doing 10 by 10 with a non-challenging weight or doing 30 reps with something like 40% of your max, you are accumulating a lot of fatigue. But are you accumulating the type of fatigue that is going to hypertrophy your muscles? In my opinion, no, you are way too high on the cardiovascular type of fatigue and way too low on the muscular side of the endurance that you want to tap into so that you damage the muscle fibers. That's just one aspect of the fatigue versus stimulus discussion. There's also the uh, idea floating out there that you can also accumulate too much muscular fatigue that is going to result in less gains. For me, from the, my point of view, this is not something that most people should worry about. Novices, and especially people who are highly motivated, can sometimes take that to heart and should sometimes abide by that advice because they're the type of people who can get rubbed though, they can get injured. But for the most part, you will know once the muscle is not fit to be worked anymore because you won't be able to use it. So it's, it's that simple. Let's say you have a threshold of an ability of doing 30 push-ups. You do your bench workout. If after the bench workout, you can get one set at 30 push-ups and then the second set at 29, your bench workout did not damage the muscle fibers enough because you still have too much of an ability to go back to baseline. If you can get the first set at 30 reps and then the second set is 20 reps, in my opinion, that shows that you did enough damage to your muscular endurance with your bench that your ability to do something that should be easy for you to recover from aka a push-up workout is now completely gone that's a good indication that you actually have a stimulus to fatigue ratio that is going to create gains it's a topic that is in my opinion divisive simply because people cannot agree on the terms that we're using so many people have different definitions of what stimulus, for example, what is, a, what is a stimulus? A stimulus is anything that is going to stimulate the muscle. That by itself is not precise enough. This stimulated my muscle. Do you think that it's going to be conducive to hypertrophy? No. Why? Because the stimulus was not strong enough. So even in the world of stimulus, there are stimulus and stimulus, just like with tonnage. There's quality stimulus, there's, uh, there's uh, what people call junk stimulus. It's all a matter of understanding the body and having a strong understanding of intensity and volume manipulation so that you can get right what you need and be just on the money when it comes to that. If you put too much weight on your back and you go down for a squat and you cannot put it back up, whether you get injured or not, that was a stimulus. But it's a stimulus that was too high because it's, it exceeded your ability to actually move the weight. 
It's the same logic when it comes to your ability to handle volume. A lot of people, when they talk about stimulus to fatigue ratio, they talk about the global concept of the training session being too long and being too copious in tonnage, right? Meaning that you do too much volume that you can't recover from. I covered that topic many times in the uh, maximum recoverable volume videos and the others in the hypertrophy series. But for me, it is something that is not an exact science, changes from individual to individual, and it's something that is 100% testable. You can test for yourself what your body can recover from. A much more interesting approach to the stimulus to fatigue ratio, in my opinion, exists within the microcosm of the lift itself. For example, some people will say that certain lifts have too much, create too much fatigue for not enough stimulus and therefore are not worth it. That's interesting. That's something that I can see myself talking about because now we're opening the box and we're actually being more precise. For example, some people say that the deadlift creates too much fatigue. What type of fatigue the deadlift creates? If you say cardiovascular fatigue, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I think that people who are in shape should be able to do deadlifts, even high rep deadlifts, which I don't encourage people to do for different reasons, without being gassed. That's cardiovascular endurance and that is something that should always be on point and have at the same level than your muscular endurance. For me, the type of fatigue that deadlift creates in most people, and this is why they think that it's not worth doing, is tendon fatigue and mechanical fatigue, because they don't have the structural integrity to handle a lift like the deadlift, because their form suffers from it. This is directly correlated with their inability to maintain their thoracic extension. It has nothing to do with the deadlift being a bad lift. For me, the reason why the deadlift is well known for creating a lot of fatigue is because it's going to light up so many muscles of your body and you can use such maximal weights on it because you're very strong on it that it is going to allow you to rack up a lot and a lot of damage. But is that a bad thing? In my opinion, no, it is a good thing. It is going to save you a ton of time because it is going to be able, it's going to disperse muscular damage on a ton of areas of your body, which is going to also carry over and give you a ton of tonnage that you won't have to do in the workout afterwards. It's, it's allowing you to rack up large numbers uh, with very little time because you can move such maximum weights on it. So that's a good thing. See, I just flipped the entire stimulus to fatigue ratio on its head. For me, when you know the type of fatigue you're getting and you have a strict control over it, because you also understand the volume and intensity that take place in your workout and in your training plan, then fatigue, it loses its negative connotation. It now becomes a neutral term. And in most cases for bodybuilders, fatigue is a good thing. We want fatigue. We want to reach the maximum threshold of fatigue that we can recover from, to grow from. from. For me, this is also why the contradiction between stimulus and fatigue is so contradictory is because it's like talking about volume versus tonnage. Volume versus tonnage, yes, they are different things, but at the end of the day, their essence is the same. Fatigues are directly created by, by stimulus, and there can be no stimulus without fatigue, because if you stimulate but you're not fatigued, there will be no growth. You did not push enough. So that's it for this video. I might make videos where I focus on fatigue or rather more stimulus because I have several ideas of videos for fatigue. So I might discuss the different types of stimulus. Let me know if you would be interested. Thank you for watching. Your, uh, your uh, thoughts are always welcome in the comments. I always love discussing, discussing the principles of hypertrophy with you. Thank you for watching and have a good day.